three-point range in the last two games. How big was it for you to, to hit that first three-pointer in the first half? Um, I think it was just all part of the game, really. Um, I just played within the offense, and they found me open a couple times before I made that one. So I'm just happy I made a shot and ready to go. You had three in a row there in five minutes to help you guys pull away. For you, can you just talk about tonight, big night for you, be back in Indiana, and then have your family here watching? I mean, yeah, it's great to have my family and friends here to watch, but it's not wasn't really about me, it was about the team. And uh, I think we did a great job on defense is what we been working on, chasing, being there on the catch, and um, everybody really did their part tonight. Samaji, as close as this game was at your guys' place back in January for most of that game, are you surprised at the way this one went at their place? How easy did you guys were able to pull ahead? Uh, I want to say surprise. I just feel like we just came out more more aware and more ready. I was just trying to stop uh, Dunham. Pretty much just trying to get the other player to shoot the ball. That was our main focus to make sure when he caught it, we was right there, all of us, not just one, not just D. So you know, it was just, I think we just came out more focused and ready to play. Samaj, is that more proof to you that you guys are turning the corner defensively and being the team you were earlier this season? Yeah, I kind of think we, we getting back to, the, to that page. We was at the beginning of the season, but it's going to be an everyday, everyday thing at practice. I know at practice he, he preached a lot about jumping to the ball and being aggressive when we when we got our man. So I feel like if all of us ready to play, we, we, sh we should be fine. Samasha, uh, playing away from Cintas, you guys haven't necessarily played your best uh, there. How important is it for you guys to get uh, started on, on this stretch with a, with a win? Because you got four out of five playing uh, on the road. Oh, that's big. That's big. It gives us a big momentum going into the next or uh, going into Marquette game. I feel like we, if we win this game today, I feel like Marquette will be ready to play. Everybody focused. We won't have no, no downs about the game. So. D, you're a guy from Bloomington. You're familiar with Butler's program probably a little bit more than your other teammates. Are you surprised at their struggles this year in the Big East? Um, I mean, coach says it all the time that, you know, the Big East isn't, isn't a, a conference that has anybody that's just not that good. Like, everybody can beat anybody at any time, home or away. And, um, I mean, it's proven itself this year with, you know, how everybody's been moving up and down in the, in the rankings in the conference. But, I mean, Butler plays hard regardless of their record. So, I mean, it didn't really surprise me because we could have got off to a bad start, too. But, I mean, we just, we won games. I mean, that's all you got to do is continue to win and, and go day by day. Defensive effort and toughness tonight. Um, you know, I say it every time we play Butler, have a lot of respect for the way they play. Um, you know, they're going to put you in a grinder. They run a million plays. I thought D was as locked in um, as he's ever been, you know, to, uh, to hold Kellen down to two points. If you do that, uh, it really puts a lot of pressure uh, on Butler's other players to to deliver, and, and you know even the ones he shot were really really tough shots. So um, you know I thought that was a huge uh, point of emphasis coming in. Out rebound him 34-26, and generally really set the tone with taking care of the ball early. Um, and uh, I thought a big turn, not a turning point, but but something that gave our team I think a little bit of confidence was right before the. Um, Half ended. Butler went on a little mini run, and then we were able to, uh, you know, Miles Davis hits a three-point shot at the top of the key, goes back up seven, and then we get the last shot of the half, and Mosh hits um, a little mid-range uh, over Cam Woods to go back in the locker room at nine. I thought um, that was that was really big for us to go into the locker room with the same type of margin that we had um, had earlier in the half. But uh, really proud of our team. Uh, great effort. It's always going to be a tough venue when you come here to Hinkle Fieldhouse and. Um, so we move on to, to Marquette. D was so good defensively, but he also was able to score for the first time in quite a few games. Um, can you talk about those three three-pointers that he hit in just a short span that really gave you Well, the adjustment that Butler's made here is, um, is we've all transitioned to a team with deeper um, and, and more athletic and, and, and larger front courts is uh, they're, they're post-trapping a lot. They're trying to get the ball out of um, you know, the five and four's hands on the other, th other team. So we knew the post-trap was coming. I thought Jalen did a great job. You know, he played hot potato with the basketball and got it out right away. Matt tried to make the home run pass a few, a few too many times uh, rather than just make the simple play. But the times that we did get it out safely, uh, we swung it around and got wide open shots. And um, it was good. We needed to hit some, hit some shots. We hadn't really necessarily done that over the last few games. But, you know, if you post-trap, 
and you do a really good job of getting the ball out of the trap, somebody's going to be open. And, and you know, fortunately, we uh, were able to knock down some shots and sort of use that against them. Chris, you played Butler when they've been at their best in the last couple of years. Are you surprised at how humbling this entrance to the Big East has been for them? It's just, to, to me, I, I wouldn't call it humble. Now, I'm not here every day. I think it's probably a, a difficult task, um, you know, to get your kids energized and ready to go when, when you go, you know, heartbreak after heartbreak after heartbreak. Uh, you know, we had our share of close games early in the season, and we still do. And, and, and we've, we, um, you know, we're, we're on the fortunate end. And so, um, to me, you know, Butler isn't miles away. I think Matt Howard said it in the uh, Indy Star. You know, they're they're saying the right things. They're they're inches away. But I, my only concern is, is Xavier and uh, Brandon's going to do a great job. And, and they play with so much toughness. It's just a matter of time. Some of those kids have to get a little bit more experience. This was the stretch, uh, first game of four out of five that you guys have on the road. How important was it to get this win? because of this any, any win is an important win. You know, we again, I keep saying it, but we do not look at it like a fan and, and say we got a bunch of, you know, games on the road. We just, it's, it's next game. It's next game. It's what does Butler present? What does Marquette present? Um, but, um, you know, we lost our last couple road games uh, at Providence, uh, at Villanova, and we needed to respond tonight and play better on the road, and we did that. You know, Dave West had, I thought, some great words for our kids today in the shoot-around. Uh, about starting off um, taking care of the basketball and establishing the way you want to play, not taking shots that are similar to turnovers and the quick shots with no one in position to rebound. And, and I thought our kids listened to Dave. Um, maybe I should hire him as assistant coach. So can, you, can, you take, can you take him on the road with you? <laughs> not only did I take him on the road, I'd like to sub him in. I looked over and saw <laughs> Paul George and those guys and you know, I thought I could slip a blue uniform on him. But I guess they need to rest between games. They were able to chip away at the lead a little bit, but for the most part, you guys kept your foot on the gas in the second half. What does that say about the team, especially when you know people are starting to leave the building? It's kind of quiet in here, and they have this lead they're playing with. Well, you know, I, I just want I want our team to play to its own expectation, and you know we've been in situations where. Um, you know, the last eight minutes become a 30 to 30 type game. And I, we did not want that. And uh, I give our kids credit to stay locked in. Because again, you know, we're playing a really talented team, a team that can get hot behind the three point line. The next thing you know, you make a couple turnovers and it's a nine, you know, nine, 10 point game. And um, so I was really glad that uh, we, we were able to keep our focus, play with intensity all the way throughout the game. How, how enjoyable is it for you to watch your team <clears throat> defensively make things so ugly out there? For Especially the way we were playing defense, defense about three or four weeks ago, uh, it makes me feel good. But you know, success is never final. Um, you have to continue to, to get better every single day. You have to come in as players and want to get better every single day. And um, you know, we've gotten a little bit better, a lot better here defensively the last couple games. We have to continue that because that'll keep you in every game you play. You may not win them all, but at least you'll be in there to uh, to maybe steal a couple. And I just want to say publicly before I leave, you know, from uh, the entire Xavier basketball family, we are praying for Andrew Smith. I had so much respect for him as a player. Uh, that kid had so much toughness. He was always a, uh, uh, a kid that um, we knew was going to get every 50-50 ball, no matter how hard we screamed at our players. And so, um, you know, from Xavier basketball as a representative, I just want to say, um, you know, best wishes on, on fighting cancer. And uh, you got us in our prayers. Thanks.